hospitals and ledgers and the different types of each, as well as how do we then get to the trial balance and the ending financial statements. So if you see this overall process, this is how we go from a source document all the way to the financial statements at the end, including the closing entries. So first, a transaction occurs. So this is some economic event that happens that we need to capture financial data on. It is having some economic effect for our organization. Most transactions start or have somewhere in that transaction a source document. So think of a purchase order, a receiving document, an invoice, those types of things that you're familiar with. In that case, we prepare those documents. This then goes into uh, recording into our official records. We first record in the journal. This is where all the details happen and every single transaction that affects our financial statement needs to be recorded in a journal. Then we summarize that information and post to the ledgers. From there, at month N, when we've completed everything, we have a trial balance. This is unadjusted, so this is the balances before we do any adjusting entries of every single account in the general ledger. We then make our adjusting entries at month end and additional ones at year end and prepare the adjusted trial balance. Once that is complete and reviewed, we go on to prepare the financial statements. At the end of the fiscal year, we close the entries to zero out income and expenses, and we start a new year. So let's kind of look at a manual system of how entries are recorded and then summarized to get to the financial statements. Now, even though the same type of system is used in a computerized system, or at least that's how it's displayed, the data is stored a little bit differently behind the scenes. So as I said, every transaction that has a financial effect on the organization has to go into a journal. This is your first step. So the tr transaction is recorded in a journal, which gives us an overall record of the details of each business event. Now the accounts used is um, structured through a chart of accounts and it lists all the accounts in, in a numerical order. Most chart of accounts start with assets, liabilities, then owner's equity, followed by revenue and expenses. As you notice, this is the order of our financial statements. First the balance sheet, then the income statement. And even the sub accounts under assets are usually put in the same order show all aspects of every transaction. A date, which accounts, maybe at least two, we need of course a debit and credit, and a brief description. So here's our chart of accounts. As you can see, this is just a partial. It's showing us the assets and liabilities. And you can see in the order here in assets, cash, and that's usually first in your balance sheet, accounts receivable, inventory, and then our uh, current liabilities, etc. Now to make the process of entering transactions a lot more simple, we actually have two journals. We have the specialized journals and the general journal. So the specialized journal is for things that occur in that business on a frequent basis. For example, sales. Hopefully you're having more than one sale a day. You're having multiple sales, and especially if you want to track it at a level of each individual sa sale in the journal, you will want to use a specialized journal. Similar with cash receipts, purchases, investments, payroll, fixed assets. Um, actually, not as much fixed assets, payroll. Sorry about that. Um, all of these are recorded in specialized journals and partially because it already has predefined columns. So if you think about cash receipts, anytime you do a cash receipt, one of the accounts that will be effective would be cash. 
and so we can see we have a debit up here at the top. And then we have our potential credit accounts for this organization. The bulk of the credit accounts were going to go to accounts receivable, some were cash sales, and we may have a column over to the right that is cut off that's for other. So we receive cash for another reason besides accounts receivable sale, potentially a loan or some other refund of electric or other cash that comes in for a variety of reasons. And then we have the general journal. So this is for items that are not recorded on a regular basis. So this would be our closing entries, for example. We only do those once a month or some once a year. Depreciation, bad debts, other adjusting entries, potentially a write-off of an account, a bad debt. So these are infrequent and non-routine. So this journal is a little bit more free form and allows you to debit and credit any entry. Just a note, especially when you're doing your projects, you don't record an entry in both. You either record it in the specialized journal or the general gen journal, not both. Then we have our ledgers. So at the month end, we summarize all the data in our journals, our specialized journals. We add up the columns, and then we have all the entries in our general journal. So what we need to do is then take those entries and post them to the general ledger. The general ledger contains cumulative information. So after all the entries are recorded, they're then posted. We also need to have some entries in our subsidiary ledgers, which we'll get to in a moment. The general journal contains summary data. So for every single account, we will record the totals from the specialized journals and the individual entries from the general journal and post those to the general ledger. We're not containing all of the details that we would have in these other journals. They will stay there. Just the summary information comes to the general ledger. So if you look at this picture, here is the cash count uh, account in the general ledger. You can see that on November 30th, the total from the cash receipts journal was posted to a debit. A total from the cash disbursements journal is posted here as a credit. And then our total payroll, what we wrote out for a check. And then here's something that is recorded in the general journal, a bank service charge. Now we also have a subsidiary ledger. So think about it, some accounts we need to know specifically a who or more detail uh, balance. So think about accounts receivable. This would represent what cash customers owe us. Now it doesn't good, ha, do us any good if we only track that at a total level. Yes, our customers owe us $10,000, but we don't know who to collect it from. So we need to track those items on an individual basis. So we know customer A versus customer B and how long each of those were is past due potentially. Similarly with accounts payable and fixed assets. For tax purposes, we need to know this for uh, how much each employee earned during the year because we need to be able to report that to the federal authorities. We also have inventory, which we need to know how many parts we have of each thing in, in our um, inventory, and then marketable securities. So here's an example of an accounts payable subsidiary ledger for Velocity Sports. You can see that we've received invoice and then a check, and we have a current balance of zero. So if we have a subsidiary ledger, there has to be a corresponding control account in the general ledger. So for example, we have a subsidiary accounts payable ledger. We have a control account in the general ledger for accounts payable. If we add up all the balances of each account in the subsidiary ledger, that will equal the total in the general ledger.
So at the end of the period, usually at year end, you'll create trial balances. And there are really three trial balances that we want to focus on. The first one is an unadjusted trial balance. This lists all of the general ledger accounts, their debits and credits balances. Then we make our adjusting entries and we have an adjusted trial balance. And within your SUA project, you will do a worksheet that has both your unadjusted, you will make your entries and an adjusted. And then after we have closed all of uh, the accounts after year end, we'll have a post-closing trial balance, which will only have your asset and liability, your balance sheet accounts. So here's part of a worksheet. You can see the unadjusted trial balance and the adjusted trial balance. Off to the right, you would see the post-closing trial balance. The goal of all of this is to leave an audit trail. This will get us from a point of origin to the final output. So from a source document all the way to the financial statement and vice versa. So let's look a little bit. This is a picture from your textbook. We can see that the audit trail, so we have page five of a specialized journal, the sales journal. And we can see that we have several sales for that date and a total of 15,000. So that total is going to the general ledger and it's posted as a debit to sales. And uh, I'm sorry, this is not sales, this is accounts receivable. There we go, that makes a lot more sense now, doesn't it? Here's our credit to the sa credit sales, so debit to accounts receivable, credit to sales. Notice we're not posting each individual line item, but we're posting the total. And it says the sales journal page five. And that sales journal page five comes here, but now we're on the subsidiary ledger and we're posting that total to sales. So keep in mind, journals contain the details and must have every single transaction listed in them. The ledgers then contain the summarized information from the, from the journals. We create our balance sheet, or we, we create our trial balance, which will then be used to generate your balance sheet and income statement.